Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the world of Coca-Cola on this very, very special occasion as we, as all of us, as we honor His All Holiness Bartholomew, economical, ecumenical patriarch of the Orthodox Church. We are also honored to, the, to welcome to our world of Coca-Cola His Eminence Archbishop Demetrius, His Eminence Alexius of Atlanta, distinguished metropolitans, esteemed clergy, our governor, our wonderful governor, Perdue, distinguished members of the diplomatic corps, my great friends, Father Alex and Zanti, their son, Michael, members of the Coca-Cola Company Board of Directors, Don Keo, his wife, Mickey, and also Ron Allen and his wife, Marcy, great Coca-Cola bottling partners from around the world, and also good friends of ours, my wife and I, Andrew Liveris and his wife, Paula, chairman of Dow Chemical, and all of you, our dear friends and guests. And actually, friends, I have one other special guest. I must recognize, and I hope you will appreciate why I would like to recognize her. A few days ago, I received a very well-written, persuasive letter from a young lady called Alexandra Christopoulos from Knoxville, Tennessee. She said that she was giving a presentation on the ecumenical patriarch at an upcoming festival sponsored, sponsored by the Greek Orthodox Church of America. She asked in her letter if she could be here in person tonight as that experience being here in person would greatly, greatly enhance her presentation that she was going to give. Your Holiness, Rest assured, I wasn't about to deny this beautiful eighth grade young lady that honor. Would you please stand up? Stand up, there she is. Raise your hand, there she is. She's here with her father, Christos, and her grandfather, Harry Moskos. So everyone tonight, to everyone here tonight, thank you for sharing this wonderful, wonderful moment with us. Patriarch Bartholomew, we are truly, truly honored by your presence tonight. And also, we thank you. We thank you for spending time with us during this historic trip to the United States on the occasion of the 10th anniversary of Archbishop Demetrius as Primate of America. Archbishop Demetrius, congratulations. <laughs> Almost two years ago, I had the privilege of helping restore a 500-year-old Greek Orthodox Church overlooking the blue waters of the Aegean Sea on the coast of Turkey near my ancestral village, town. His All Holiness, Patriarch Bartholomew, was at the dedication ceremony, and as we were chatting, my wife Daphne and I indicated that actually it would give us great honor, great pleasure, and to host His Holiness, His All Holiness here in Atlanta. Well, 20 months later, here we are on this wonderful and historic occasion, 
and I'd really like to thank His All Holiness. Last year also my wife Daphne and I had the privilege, the distinct privilege to travel to Rome with the Patriarch during his visit with the Pope. It was an experience that we will not forget and there were others here, there are others here who were on that trip. And Daphne and I consider ourselves tremendously fortunate and privileged to have established a close relationship with Patriarch Bartholomew, and we are certainly spiritually richer for this experience. Indeed, the whole world, our planet, is incredibly fortunate to have such a visionary spiritual leader as his all holiness. At Coca-Cola, we like to think that we play a small role in bringing the world together through the common experience of a simple moment of pleasure, of refreshment. And over the course of the 123 years, our company, our brands, have been invited into the lives of and homes of people from every nation around the world. Today, we refresh consumers through our local operations in 206 countries and territories around the world. And in fact, we are in more nations than the United Nations. In fact, tonight here, we have bottlers who come from the Palestinian territory, who come from Athens, who come from all around the world, from Charlotte. And as I look around this beautiful room tonight, I see people all of us, people, representing many different nations, representing many different cultures, and many different faiths. All of us bonded together in fellowship over these wonderful bottles of Coca-Cola. celebrating our shared humanity and passion for life and peace are also the same messages that have defined the life and defined the work of our get honored guest this evening. We look forward to a wonderful dinner tonight and we're going to begin with, I would like to ask His All Holiness again to have an invocation tonight so we can then start our dinner. Christe, O Theos, ευλόγησον την βρόσιν και την πόσιν των δούλων σου, ότι Άγιος ή πάντοτε νυν και αή και εις τους αιώνας των αιώνων. Αμήν. It goes short, isn't it? <laughs> Enjoy. I want to begin tonight by acknowledging what an honor it is to welcome uh, our distinguished guest to our state and to our city. His All Holiness Bartholomew, Archbishop Demetrius, thank you for honoring our state on your very busy schedule here in the United States. I know that it comes from the deep friendship that you have with the Kents, but we're the beneficiaries of that relationship, and we want you to know how honored we are to be in your midst tonight. Thank you for coming. It's an honor to have you here in our state. I think anyone here who knows me knows that I'm a huge supporter of this little beverage company that calls Georgia home. And as I travel around the world selling our state, our wonderful state of Georgia, I find myself in meeting with presidents and governors and premiers, executives and others across the world. And the drink of choice is always Mutar Coca-Cola. The Coca-Cola Company, as I like to call them internationally, is the official State Department of the state of Georgia. Because everywhere I have go, they've already been there 100 years and have paved the way with hospitality and refreshment and a warm sense of welcome. 
Your All Holiness, it's a rare privilege to have you here with us tonight, and I think it's safe to say that all of us would not be sitting here enjoying the evening if it wasn't for this great company. So Mutar, on behalf of everyone here, I'd like to thank you. And also, I know what a great leader you are, but as I watched your lovely wife, Daphne, work the crowd, I could tell who was also the beloved one. So thank you all very much for having us here tonight uh, in this honor. Your All Holiness, I understand from a little research that we share a love of this passage from the prophet Ezekiel, where it reads, It is not enough for you to feed on good pasture. Must you also trample the rest of the pasture with your feet? Is it not enough for you to drink clear water? Must you also muddy the rest with your feet? Must my flock feed on what you have trampled and drink what you have muddied with your feet? I'm glad to know that you have appropriately earned the title as the Green Patriarch long before it was cool in teaching us people of faith how to live on this planet in sustainable and to give back more than we get from it. Thank you very much for that. I learned those lessons as a young man, the son of a farmer in middle Georgia, and I uh, tried to view everything in life through the lens of stewardship, asking the question, and the question of our faith as well, what are we leaving behind for the next generation? God has called us to be stewards, yes, of money, of our time, and certainly of the beautiful blessings he's left us in our environment. I think that begins with an appreciation of what has been given to us, but it goes beyond that, and it requires an understanding of our personal responsibility to use what God has given to us for good and for those who come behind. I think the faith community, with that foundational recognition of God as creator, can bring to bear a vision of environmental stewardship with great power and persuasion. And I want to thank you, All Holiness, for extending that call to people of all faith. In Georgia, we are more conscious than ever with our natural disasters that have occurred, 500-year floods and droughts followed there. And we're conscious of natural resource issues, and we've lost an ambitious conservation program. And I want to acknowledge tonight, Mutar, that the company that's our host tonight has been a leader. Obviously, the vital resource of water is vital to their livelihood of their company, and they've been leaders in this conservation effort. And I want to once again thank the Coca-Cola Company for their moral leadership in this effort as well. Thank you very much. Leaders in our faith communities have been some of the most vocal proponents of this conservation movement, and I think this is one of those areas where our churches and our houses of worship can have tangible impact for the good of society as a whole. Perhaps the biggest threat to the Western culture is the trend towards secularism, a trend that goes hand in hand with that cynicism that says faith fails to make a tangible difference. I think the work like that of His Holiness is doing to promote environmental stewardship and to promote peace and unity among all people around the world is just the antidote for this time. Your All Holiness, thank you again for being here and for the leadership you're providing as we confront the very complex issues of the world and the challenges of the day. Thank you. God bless you. When His All Holiness Bartholomew became the Ecumenical Patriarch in 1991, that historic moment in 1991 marked the ascension of the 270th, 270th spiritual leader of the Orthodox Christian Church, an unbroken line of succession that stretches back to Saint Andrew the Apostle. As the spiritual,
as the spiritual leader of more than 300 million Orthodox Christians worldwide, His All Holiness has both the historical as well as the theological responsibility to initiate and to coordinate actions amongst the Orthodox Christians throughout the world. As a citizen of Turkey, His All Holiness brings a rich, a distinct perspective on East-West issues and a unequaled leadership voice in the continuing dialogue amongst the Christian, Jewish, and Islamic faiths around the world. I have had, as I said, the good fortune, indeed the blessing, to know Patriarch Bartholomew for many, many years and to work with him on a number of projects and initiatives. The friendship, the wisdom, the counsel I have received over the years from the Patriarch are things that I hold, we hold with Daphne very dear. The leadership he has exhibited over the last two decades has been defined by extraordinary acts of both courage and vision. Outspoken in his condemnation of growing fanaticism, nationalism, and ethnic strife around the world, his All Holiness has worked tirelessly to promote interfaith dialogue, religious liberty, peace, and tolerance. For these and other efforts, Pat Patriarch Bartholomew was awarded the U.S. Congressional Gold Medal in 1997. And importantly today, His All Holiness is also recognized as one of the world's foremost environmental leaders. His work, his work to define environmentalism as a spiritual responsibility. Environmentalism as a spiritual responsibility led Time Magazine to call the Patriarch, one of the hundred most influential people in the world. And for the past 15 years, he has so effectively brought leaders from both government, business, science, NGOs, and clergy to engage, to develop strategies to save some of the world's most fragile ecosystems, including the Baltics, the Adriatic, the Aegean, the Black and Arctic Seas, as well as the Danube and Amazon rivers. Earlier this week, His All Holiness convened the eighth environmental symposium in New Orleans, where spiritual, and environmental leaders examine the plight of the Mississippi River. As we are all faced, all of us, with the responsibilities of a planet in peril, we would do, we would do well to remember the words of His Old Holiness who said, and I quote, to commit a crime against the natural world is a sin, he said. And for human beings to destroy the biodiversity of God's creation, to contaminate the Earth's water, its land, its air, and its people, all of these are sins, unquote. His All Holiness has reinforced these points 
in a very, very eloquently stated editorial in the Wall Street Journal this week. For the next two weeks, His All Holiness will be taking these as well as many other messages of wisdom and hope to business, to government, spiritual leaders, as he is doing here in Atlanta, New York, Washington, New Orleans, across the country. And in Washington, His All Holiness will meet with Senate and House leaders at a lunch hosted by Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi. He will also meet with Vice President Joe Biden, Secretary of State, as well as President Obama. We are truly deeply honored by his presence here at our world of Coca-Cola. So ladies and gentlemen, please join me in extending a very warm welcome to his All Holiness. Your Excellency, the Governor, dearly beloved brother hierarchs, Honorable Muhtar and Daphne Kent, our beloved friends and hosts, distinguished guests, beloved in the Lord. Tonight we have gathered at this remarkable center, in truth, a museum to one of the most beloved products and, if we might use the word, icons of the 20th century. We have been brought together by a dear and trusted friend, Mr. Muhtar Kent, who presides over this remarkable company with more than one million employees in 200 countries as the chairman and chief executive officer. Muhtar and Daphne, we love you very much and we thank you very much. Today is the national feast, the national day of our country, Turkey. And I am very happy to be able to celebrate this day together with my so valuable friends. And on this occasion, I pray for stability, prosperity, and peace in our country, and that it becomes as soon as possible a full member of the European Union, something to which it aspires. We would say to our dear friend Muhtar, with all that you must attend to on a daily basis, you are one of the few people in the world who can imagine what it is to be ecumenical patriarch. <laughs> and we would add, the care and the compassion with which you attend to the business of this world reflects the highest of ethical and moral values that we strive daily to bring to the purely spiritual mission of the Ecumenical Patriarchate, the first see of the Orthodox Christian Church worldwide. Many of our goals are the same, a better world through cross-cultural understanding. The valuation of every human person, regardless of their origin or belief system dialogue and mutual understanding. The Ecumenical Patriarchate, always responsive to its arduous yet sustaining vocation to reach out to the ends of the Ecumene, the inhabited world, with a message of peace, reconciliation, and above all, love, finds refreshment, if we might also use this word, from the friendship and trust that it has with Muhtar Kent. <laughs> Refreshment. <laughs> Dear friend Muhtar, you once said 
that trust is more valuable than gold. And these words bear witness to the mind and consciousness that have characterized your life. And for those who know of the nobility of your parents and their sacrifice for the sake of basic human rights and human values, your example is a true testament of honor. We know that their heroic efforts on behalf of Jewish persons during the Second World War were based not in any one religious world view, but in the all-encompassing vision of love for all humankind and the value of every human life. May the Lord of all grant them eternal rest with the righteous of every generation who have been well pleasing to him. In the modern world, words like value, trust, and fidelity have become part and parcel of the terminology of the financial world. Value, trust, fidelity. But their meanings have become estranged from concepts of confidence and faithfulness. They have literally become diminished to the lowest common denominator, money. And as a result, we are witnessing the perennial insecurity that comes when gold becomes more valuable than trust. It is an inversion best described rhetorically by Jesus himself when he asked, which is greater, the gold or the temple that sanctifies the gold? Faithfulness, commitment, trust, belief in something greater than oneself and one's own interests, this is the essence of the fabric that binds the human family together. Whether we speak of the smallest of families or the greatest of nations, belief in the transcendent is essential for the healthy prosperity of all. Indeed, when it comes to spiritual perspectives, our human family is quite diverse. Many religions, many interpretations within religions, even a single verse of sacred text can become a source of endless and more often than not fruitless argument. But there is one reality that all of us can agree on, that we share this planet Earth. In the widest sense of the word, we all share one ecosystem. You may recall that the prefix eco comes from the Greek word ikos, which means house. Truly, we have one house for the one human family, and this family must share it and must be responsible for it. Concern for our common home is what brought us in the recent days back to, the, to New Orleans and to the mighty Mississippi River. As we have traveled the globe in our previous seven symposia, we have found that bringing together seemingly opposing camps, that is religion and science, is an effective way of raising awareness about the dangers of ineffective action or even inaction. Nevertheless, as a purely spiritual institution, the Ecumenical Patriarchate fosters more than mere dialogue. We bring a profound and timeless message of the interconnectedness of all human persons with their, their creator, with his creation, and with each other. It is in the nexus of these relationships that we can discover 
the solutions to the problems that not only vex our world, but even those that plug and threaten our world. But we have not come here this evening only to speak of relationships. We have come to celebrate one. Gathered here together with all of you, we must speak of refreshment, something well known in this universe of Coca-Cola. Among so many friends and fellow laborers in the constant struggle for peace and reconciliation, we are reminded of the psalm. Behold now what is so good or so joyous as for brethren to dwell together in unity. Old Testament. Truly, as we pray in thanksgiving, for all of you, we celebrate with joy in our heart and with great gratitude for the goodness of God, whose love and infinite mercy we pray be with all of you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Please be seated. I have a small souvenir, small and great souvenir uh, to Daphne and Mukhtar. This is the Holy Quran, the sacred book of our Muslim brothers and sisters to you. Therefore, I'd like to just unveil this. this. This is an original vintage of Coca-Cola advertisements from days gone by. In fact, both of these, Your All Holiness, are from the year 1940, the year of your birth. In fact, the one on the left is from February 1940. Those of you who don't know, His All Holiness was so special, he was born on February the 29th. 